Voluntary euthanasia is a widely discussed topic between physicians. Its challenge of morals and ethics creates a divide amongst doctors, civilians, and even terminally ill. So first off, what is uh, voluntary euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide? Well, uh, as stated in the name, it's a way for someone to end their life uh, through the help of a physician or through euthanasia. Currently, there are 11 states and seven countries that allow uh, euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide. Um, and already, such a small number of countries and states have created quite the outrage amongst physicians all over the world, uh, specifically within Canada and Italy. In Canada, 90% of palliative care physicians oppose euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide. While in Italy, 62.8% of physicians uh, oppose euthanasia and 63.11% oppose physician-assisted suicide, with 70% saying that they would not participate or practice euthanasia and another 68.6% saying that they will not uh, practice physician-assisted suicide. Um, so in there, I explained palliative care, which palliative care is uh, not explained, but I said, um, and Basically, what palliative care is, it's it's a way for people to um, not, it's, it's pretty much trying to help people feel less pain. It's a way, it's, it's a much more safer option than uh, physician-assisted assist, suicide or voluntary euthanasia. Uh, it allows for people to find better ways to treat pain, to treat depression, to treat anything that they feel is leading them towards this path of... Um, physician-assisted suicide. Um, but as well as the uh, strong opposition for many physicians, um, it, it also leaves open the idea that some suicides are okay. Um, and that would become a statement in the medical world if this were to become a full-on practice within the medical world. Um, so a lot, a lot of the time, I think, from what I've seen, most of the time people who are asking for physician-assisted suicide or euthanasia, they're not in the best of place. A study in Oregon showed that a that 30% of people who asked for physician-assisted suicide when referred to a psychiatrist or a therapist, um, only 3% of them really wanted to go on with it. I think that shows that we should look for better options in our mental health care and our, um, you know, psychiatrists, uh, you know, counselors, therapists, whatever, whatever we can do to make people feel safer. Um, cause a lot of the time it's just people aren't feeling that they are being helpful. Now, um, a study done in Oregon, which is one of the only states who, to pass physician assisted suicide showed that 70, 74.4% of people are afraid of being a, a burden to their family or friends. Um, while 89.1% are afraid of losing their dignity and 90.6% are afraid of losing any autonomy. And another 88.9% are afraid of losing the ability to do everyday activities. It's, it's not that these people want to go because they are, because it's what they want. They're, they're afraid to go because they're afraid of a new way of living, which is why I think mental health care, psychiatry, things like that are going to be a big part and why physician assisted suicide will not fix any of that. Um, you know, why should we allow for some people to die because a couple people feel it's okay when we can allow for people to receive the proper mental treatment needed to bring them peace and joy? Um, another thing, the final thing that I really want to talk about is this can lead to an abuse of power, a slippery slope as a lot of places, as a lot of, uh, as a lot of the, uh, sources I use, a lot of those things called it a slippery slope. Um, two countries in Europe so far ha that I know of have so far um, allowed it for quite some time. Um, the, those two being the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, so in 2012, 23% of uh, physician assisted suicide or euthanasia cases were not reported. Um, and the Dutch Ministry of Justice also reported that out of the 3,000 cases, I forgot the year, but out of 3,000 cases, 1,000 were involuntary. Um, 
that's just the Netherlands. In Belgium, the numbers are so mixed that they can't even get an accurate, an accurate reading on how many has been reported. Um, in 1990, though, 20 per only 20% of cases were ever reported. Um, and though the number has jumped to 80% as of like 2014, 2015, that still means that one in every five cases do not get reported. Um, there are also some reports that show only 50% of cases in Belgium are ever reported to the property to the proper authorities. Um, these stats show that the idea of like involuntary euthanasia or not choosing for yourself that it's time for you to go um, and not reporting it as a lot of countries request that you do report these things they that a lot of countries don't do this it's already being used it's already being shown that they won't report and they won't and th there are some people who are willing to do it even if you don't want to um, and it, it, it can leave room for all this to become out of control um, so why why should we allow for a doctor to decide if we can live like if, who can live and who can die you know um, I think allowing for people to die to, allowing for people to choose who can die and who can live can only bring the worst out of people um, you know and one of the main things is that uh, in the in in the medical world HIPAA is here to protect us um, from the improper use of medical practices and technically HIPAA would be there to prevent the improper use of you know voluntary euthanasia and PAS but um, honestly that that itself is in a is in direct violation and is completely opposite to what HIPAA is why why should we make any exception to the rule and allow for some people to die